day to you. I've just returned home to Derbyshire from from the Crimea. It was rather a long journey and it's been rather a long two years so if I appear a little tired then please do forgive me. Apparently I'm famous now which is rather strange for me and it will take some getting used to. Anyway I didn't want any fuss on my return so I travelled incognito as Miss Smith, that's my mother's maiden name. And when I got to London, I travelled by train up to Derbyshire. I got off at Watt Stanwell railway station and I walked with my luggage to Holloway Village. Perhaps you know my childhood home of Lee Hurst. It's the large Gothic house that seems to float above the Derbyshire countryside. Maybe you've been a visitor here. My mother, she does adore entertaining. Or maybe you've visited us in our other home, Embley Park, which is near the New Forest. My father, he bought Embley Park when my mother said that Lee Hurst was too small for entertaining. It has 15 bedrooms. She also said that it was too cold. I don't think my mother would have got on very well at Scutari Hospital. Anyway, being back here, in Derbyshire. It has stirred up some memories. We would spend summers here. There were ponies, there were dogs, cousins would visit. We acted in plays, we built tree houses. But do you know, even by the age of six, I knew that I didn't want the life of leisure that my family had. In fact, I'd begun to despise it. I felt that I was different from other people, at least from the people that I knew. I was certainly different from my sister Parthenope, or Pop, as we call her in the family. Oh, Parthenope, by the way, that is the Greek name for Naples, that's where she was born. I was born in... <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> my rich parents, they were on a, a grand tour of Europe at the time. No, I'm nothing like my elder sister, Pop. For a start, I, I always wanted to learn, but upper-class girls didn't go to school. They had governesses. We started off with governesses, but my father soon realised that I was too bright for them, and I have to admit to my shame, I was rather unpleasant to them. So my father, he took it upon himself to teach us. He was Cambridge educated. He taught us languages. I learned Greek, Latin, French, Italian, German. He taught us history, he taught us philosophy. And at my particular request and my, <laughs> my mother's total incomprehension, he taught us mathematics, which is my favorite. He worked us very hard in the schoolroom and I loved it. But my sister Pop, she became bored and restless. She was a very annoying sister when we were young. She used to get hold of my dolls and pull off the arms and the legs. I was forever sewing them back on. I suppose that was my first nursing. I also looked after animals. I loved the cats that we had in the family, but I didn't like what they did to small animals out in the garden, so I was always bringing in injured mice or birds or even frogs. I had a sort of animal hospital and a doll hospital set up indoors. <laughs> By the time I was 17, my mother had started to dream about my coming out. Now, a coming out for a girl is when you leave the schoolroom and you enter society. It's a whirlwind of parties and balls. And the idea is, of course, that you will attract an eligible bachelor, preferably very rich. The problem for my mother was that by then, by then I'd received my calling, my calling from God. I don't know how to describe this other than it was like a voice outside of myself calling me to service. I didn't know what I was going to do 
but I knew it would be something and it would be different from the life that my mother had planned for me, the, the brilliant marriage, the children, which is all excellent, but just not for me. I did have admirers. There was one particular man who has become a great friend of mine and a, a staunch supporter of my work. He is called Richard Monckton Milnes and oh, he's a politician and a writer, you might have heard of him. He was desperately in love with me. He spent so much time with us that it was as if he was in the family. He proposed to me many times, but eventually I, I turned him down because by then, well, I'd, I'd realised that I wanted to be a nurse. Now, to put this in context for you, in the 1830s, Nurses were not respected. Nursing was not the profession that it's going to become. Nurses were thought of as low creatures, dirty, slatternly, even drunken. People said that you were only a nurse if you were so useless at anything else that that was the only job that you could do. They worked in poor conditions often, for low pay, or even just for food and beer. So you can imagine, when I told my parents that I wanted to volunteer at Salisbury Infirmary, well, you can imagine their reaction. My mother, she went white with rage. All her plans for a brilliant marriage were just out the window. My father, he felt that all that education had gone to waste. And my sister Pop, well, she went into hysterics. But, and if there's any children listening, sometimes you just have to disagree with your parents. You have to become the person that you want to be. But I was still a minor, so my family, they decided to send me to Europe. I went with friends and we visited Rome, we went to Greece, and I did enjoy it. In Athens, I rescued a baby owl who was to become my adored pet, Athena. On my return, I, I just had to wait, wait for an opportunity, um, wait to see what it was that I was going to do with my life. And time went by. Before I knew it, I was nearly 30. My parents had begun to despair of me. So when I suggested that I go to Kaiserwerth Hospital in Germany on a visit, they reluctantly agreed. I'd heard that this hospital was excellently run by nuns and there was an orphanage attached. So I, I went there as a visitor and I loved it. I loved the discipline. I loved getting up at five o'clock every morning tending to the sick and teaching the children. I gained valuable medical experience there. I was even allowed to sit in on operations, uh, even amputations. I never told my parents that bit. Not suitable for a young lady. That's an impression of my mother. I'm told I'm an excellent mimic. <laughs> But I had to return from Kaiserwerth because I was just a visitor and just had to, had to wait for an opportunity, an opportunity to work. And by and by, that opportunity did come in the form of the Institute for the Care of Sick Gentlewomen in Distressed Circumstances. And that was in Harley Street in London. The patients were mostly governesses who had fallen into the distressed circumstances because they couldn't work, because they were sick. And I got on very well there. And I'm told that the patients, they liked me. One woman, apparently, she would get out of bed at night just to get cold feet so that I could rub them for her. <laughs> and then... Then something happened in the world, something that I'm, I'm known for, known for helping out in, and that, that was the Crimean War. <laughs> 